Lessons Muslims can Lessons Muslims can learn from the decline of the church. In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. On a recent Radio 4 program. Radio 4, Sunday, November 18, 2018. Sunday morning religious news and current affairs program presented by Edward Storton. The recording can be listened to. Discussing the efforts made by the church in alleviating national poverty, the fall and decline of churches as well as how they have spent millions of pounds to try to counteract their declining membership was discussed. The case of a church in Manchester was presented where only 30 members listened to the sermon. Hymns are sung and tea and biscuits are consumed. The members share cordial chit-chat before leaving for home. It was stressed that this is replicated in churches throughout the country. The decline of the church recent figures confirm how far the church has fallen. From the year 2006 to 2016, Methodist church membership has been falling by an average of 3.5% on an annual basis. Current figures are only 188,398 members. As reported by Church Times from the Annual Methodist Conference, 2017, c. As of 2014, the proportion of the population who identify as having no religion, 48.5%, outnumber those who define themselves as being Christian, 43.8% Anglicans, 19.9%. Non-denominational Christian, 9.3%, Catholics, 8.6%, Methodist, 1.3%, and other denominations. Stephen Bullivant, Senior Lecturer in Theology and Ethics at St. Mary's Catholic University in Twickenham, figures from Natsen's British Social Attitudes. The figures do not include Northern Ireland. C. According to the Church of England, 18 people per 1,000 regularly attend church, however this will fall to 10 per 1,000 over the next 30 years. Stated by John Spence, the finance chief of the Church of England. C. UK church membership has declined from 10.6 million in 1930 to 5.5 million in 2010, or as a percentage of the population, from approximately 30% to 11.2%. By 2013, this had declined further to 5.4 million, 10.3%. If current trends continue, membership will fall to 8.4% of the population by 2025. Statistics from the Brearley Consultancy, published by Church Statistics. C. Church attendance, as opposed to membership, has declined from 6,484,300 to 3,081,500 equivalent to a decline from 11.8% to 5.0% of the population. IBID. It is interesting to note that the above statistics are despite the existence of over 7,000 faith schools in England alone, most of which are either Church of England or Catholic. Church Strategies to Counteract the Decline In trying to counteract this demoralizing trend, the Church of England has introduced a £72 million renewal and reform initiative. That places a greater emphasis on evangelism. Many churches have also turned to social work, like food banks and other social participation projects. An increase in such activities has indeed resulted in larger church-related participation. However, increased numbers attending church social activities does not result in a strengthening of Christianity amongst attendees. In fact, this very strategy of shifting the focus away from the fundamentals of their religion to social activities is exactly what is leading to the decline of the church. When faith-based activities are centered around social activities, there is little substance and depth left. For many people, social participation is a passing phase, the strength or weakness of which is dependent upon the coming and going of that phase. Current State of Christianity it has been noticed and widely reported in the media that Christianity has become more liberal, welcoming, and integrative. Whilst increasing its focus on social activities, Christianity has adapted to current trends by relaxing many of its rules. The religion has been modernized and liberalized, yet despite all of this, the churches are now even more empty. Due to the absence of the angel, original scripture revealed to Prophet Isa, there are no real rituals of worship, even Sunday Mass is a combination of music, hymns, singing, and dancing. Many aspects of life and society are left ungoverned without the legal rulings of all, permitted, and arm, prohibited, which exists in Islam. Christians are left without any detailed guidance in how to worship God as well legislative guidance. Christianity has become a religion of faith in salvation through the death of Jesus, it provides some moral guidance which is common to almost all religions but little relevance to real-life issues and even less answers to problems faced by society. The very fact that the church feels their religion needs to change and adapt is evidence of the falsehood of the religion. 
Had Christianity been God's legislation for the betterment of humanity, it would remain unmodified, undistorted and applicable to the end times. Lessons we can learn as Muslims As Muslims, we take great pride in Islam being a complete and perfect way of life that does not require any modifications. It remains applicable and appropriate to all times, people and places. This is the very essence of the saying of Allah. This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as your religion, 503. In contrast to the current strategy of the church, we believe that humanity needs to adapt to Islam, not the opposite whereby Islam is adapted to our needs, whims and societal trends. Unlike Christianity, we do not modify our religion to suit the latest trends and secular pressures, in fact the very notion of constantly changing boundaries of morality is absurd. We do not need to change the core tenets of our religion to increase our numbers, because we believe it is these very tenets which make Islam the solution to world problems. Whilst working to make the message of Islam as far-reaching as possible, wishing guidance upon as many as possible, we hold firm to its teachings. Without sacrificing its principles and compromising its values. Similar to the churches, some mosques have tried to increase their congregation by expanding their appeal through various activities. Some have introduced games rooms within the mosque in an attempt to attract youth. Others have increased in organizing outings and excursions and developing social outreach programs. Of course, this is not to say that such activities and social programs have no place in the mosque, each strategy must be measured on its merits. However, this should never be the focus of the mosque. The core of any mosque should always be the teaching of authentic knowledge, the call to implement the sunnah to its every letter. Opposing every type of bid'ah, religious innovation, and counteracting creedal doubts relating to Ta'ad and Iman. Our mosques do not need to be fun places for the youth, this has never been the role of the mosque. Yes, they should be open and welcoming but not fun and trendy. Islamic knowledge and learning should not be trivial, humorous and populist. Knowledge in Islam has never been light-hearted, people should be taught that learning requires effort and striving, with a sincere heart and an intelligent and enthusiastic mind. People should be taught what they need to know to better their dunya, worldly life, and akira, hereafter, not what is popular, nor what they merely want. Mosques are places of ibadah, worship, learning and tranquility. They should be respected and revered. Correct etiquette should be upheld in the mosques such as keeping them tidy and fragrant, wearing appropriate clothing, avoiding idle speech, listening attentively and preserving diligence. Focus and serenity. People are searching for this in their lives. People are searching for spirituality, sense and direction. If mosques become places of triviality and mere enjoyment, the very people searching for spirituality, purpose and depth will look to other religions. We must also be cautious of liberal Islam wherein its proponents call to a version of Islam much like contemporary Christianity that is watered down and restricted to a series of vague spiritual messages in place of orthodox Islamic principles and practical tenets. Indicators of this approach include Instead of age being a physical veil covering the body, it is explained as modesty of the heart or modest fashion. Islamic orthodoxy is labeled fundamentalism and instead progressive and open-minded Islam is touted in which one is free to interpret according to one's own whims. Instead of segregation being physical separation between genders, it becomes a segregation of desires. Mosques become centers of worldly life and socializing, as opposed to places of worship and knowledge. Instead of Islam being a system of complete submission to Allah through obligatory and encouraged acts worship, diligence and knowledge, it becomes a religion of celebrations, anniversaries, commemoration and sainthood. A call to authentic Islam. As Muslims, we want to practice Islam as revealed in the Quran and conveyed by Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet himself outlined a methodology for us to practice Islam in this manner. And that is by implementing its teachings according to the way of the early pious generation of Muslims, the Salaf. This is a tradition of Islam, knowledge is learned and passed down from generation to generation, with its origins easily traceable to the Prophet and his noble companions. In the Quran, Allah makes mention of not opposing the way of the Prophet and the way of the believers. The latter relates to the way of the companions, and by extension those who are closest to their way. And whoever opposes the messenger after the guidance has become clearly manifest to him and follows a path other than that of the believers, we shall abandon him to that which he has adopted. 04. 115. Whoever opposes and disobeys what the messenger has brought after the truth has become clear to them and follows a path other than that of the believers, I will leave them with what they have chosen. And I will not bring them to the truth, since they have deliberately turned away.
I will then enter them into the fire of hell to suffer in its heat. What an evil place to return to! Anissa, 115. In addition to the above, the Prophet also made mention of the virtue of the early generation of Muslims. The best of people are my generation, then those who succeed them, then those who succeed them. Collected by Al Bukhari and Muslim. Islam is based on two fundamentals. 1. Todd, sincerity in worship. Every act of worship must be directed to Allah alone, who has no partner, son, or representative. Islam is truly the religion of monotheism. 2. Itaba, worshipping Allah in the same manner which the Prophet did so, without any innovations or changes. The guidance of Islam is taken from two primary sources. 1. Quran, the revelation which Allah gave to Prophet Muhammad it is today as it was when originally revealed, without any alterations. 2. Adth, the sayings and actions of the Prophet as authentically narrated to us. Importantly, the understanding and implementation of the Quran and Adth is limited to that of the companions and the Salaf. In traversing this methodology, we can ensure that the teachings of Islam that are taught today are the same pure teachings taught by the Prophet Muhammad and this is what distinguishes it from Christianity. No sincere knowledgeable Christian can claim that contemporary Christianity is the very Christianity of Jesus and his disciples. It is well known that many of the Christian festivals have roots in paganism, the Bible is a collection of books and writings which, aside from the Old Testament, were collected over decades. The writings contains accounts of Jesus as opposed to it being the revealed words, God like the Quran. A stark warning from a Christian to those purporting liberal Islam. Recently, the BBC. Sinead O'Connor converts to Islam. C. 26 10 18. Reported the conversion of a renowned Irish female singer to Islam. Starting with Catholicism, moving to liberal Christianity, and coming to the natural conclusion of any intelligent theologian's journey, she entered Islam. Amongst the many comments made, one in particular highlighted the current state of Christianity and the dangers that face Muslims. Jeremy McClellan, a devout Christian with a passion for interfaith and charitable efforts, insightfully stated. My Catholic friends have noted how weird it is that she went from Catholicism to liberal Christianity to Islam, but that's not weird at all. I say this in a friendly way, but liberal Christianity can't compete with Islam. Once you strip Christianity of ritual submission, prayer, fasting, beauty, pilgrimage, rules, concern for truth, etc., the human heart searches for what will provide those things. The only religion that seems to confidently offer that anymore, especially in Europe, is Islam. So unless Christians get their act together, I think we can expect a lot more conversions to Islam in the future. Don't feel left out, though, Muslims. Once liberal Islam gains strength, you will have the same problems. You'll have woke, sick, imam saying s like the real hajj is when you walk to your neighbor's house to say hello or Muhammad never existed, but the idea of him is still good or as long as you. Believe in Allah you don't have to follow any rules. If that seems insane to you, well, welcome to the last few hundred years of Christianity. Footnote. Any attempt to modernize, liberalize or modify Islam will hasten the decline of those who set out to do so. As for Islam, it will remain preserved and protected with the help of Allah, by the patient struggle of its scholars and the firmness of the righteous Muslims. We should not fear the wastage of Islam. We should only fear our own destruction if we turn away from it. There is no honor for us, no place nor value except due to this great religion which Allah has blessed us with. Stated by Sheikh Lee Al-Fazan during an open session at Imam University, 11th Rajab 1439H. Reported by various social outlets. This religion is the religion of Allah. It will not become deviated our Lord will protect and support it. It is only our own deviation that we should fear if we turn away from it or attempt to modify or modernize it. As long as a person remains sincere and firm, Allah will keep him firm. As for those who step back from this religion, Allah will keep them away. We ask Allah for certainty in Iman and strength in actions. May Allah guidance, piety, chastity and contentment. May peace, blessings and salutations be upon our beloved Prophet, his family, companions and followers. Written by Abul Abbas Navid Ayaz. Graduate of the Islamic University of Medina.